from relative obscurity to being banned from some of the most prestigious sporting events on the globe. Salt Bay, as he's known to most, went from a viral meme to one of the most hated people on the internet. Wow. Nusret Gokçe was born in 1983, Turkey, to a Kurdish family. He grew up poor with his father working in the mines, which forced him to leave school at the age of 12 to become an apprentice butcher in Istanbul. Growing up around food, it's unsurprising he pursued this profession further into adulthood. Around 2007, he began to travel around the world volunteering in kitchens wherever he went, just to gain the experience in the industry. In 2010, he returned to Istanbul where he opened his first restaurant, Nusret Steakhouse. This was a smash success. Reviews talk about great food, the nice atmosphere, perfect service, and an incredible bargain in pricing. Three people could eat a three-course meal with coffees and soft drinks for around $70 total. Within a year of being open, with people claiming it to be the best steakhouse in Istanbul, the prices had went up massively. $70 would get one person a meal. This continued to get higher and higher until 2014, where $70 wouldn't even get you four cans of Red Bull anymore. So what happened? Being an ambitious man who had travelled the world, Nusret's next step was to bring his fine dining cuisine to the billionaire's backyard, Dubai. This restaurant, unlike the humble beginnings, was all about flair and excess. The perfect place to eat for those who have money and enjoy flaunting it. Social media trends for the restaurant chain name were starting to increase. Images of people enjoying their $400 steaks and their $10,000 bills started to circulate and despite the ridiculousness of that sentence, it only increased in popularity as time went by. One of the reasons social media has received criticism is for exactly this type of excess, where spending extravagant amounts of money on the same products or services, sometimes inferior to that of cheaper alternatives, is seen as a good thing for your social status. Now take that concept and turn it into a physical location, that was the Dubai branch of Nusret Steakhouse. This, however, was just the beginning. You've probably all seen videos at some point of expensive restaurants where the service staff do some interesting, cool, unique, or terrible presentation or experience with a dish served tableside. Well, Nusret had seen these as well, and by 2017, he had multiple restaurants that were full of people with their phones out, showing their friends and followers what it's like to spend $1,000 per head on a three-course meal, and now it came with more flair than before. If you were in the restaurant at the same time as the owner, you might be lucky enough for a slightly sweaty man to come over, cut your steak tableside with some special salty seasoning technique. Enter the creation of a monster. This video was literally everywhere. Immediately the term Salt Bay skyrocketed across social media. Suddenly his restaurant name was seeing more Google searches by orders of magnitude in recent years. People were scrambling to either see why this was so popular or to find out if they could afford to go and experience this viral sensation themselves. Essentially, a man who people thought were attractive was sprinkling salt in a funny way that bounces off of his elbow and onto your steak had been so popular they propelled the man and the chain of restaurants decades into the future of success. He took his 15 minutes of fame and translated it into over $50 million. Of course, hard work and ambition got him to this stage, and he did make good food, have a good restaurant experience, and then, of course, the foresight to capitalise on this. Celebrities from every industry on the planet were finding their way to the viral sensations tables. He was being interviewed by massive publications. Salt Bay was everywhere. He started opening new restaurants all over the world, each with the same or higher absurd food prices. Despite the reason for the success being that of seeing him do the Salt Bay act with food, just the brand name alone was enough to attract those wealthy enough to eat gold-covered steaks and, of course, post the pictures on Instagram. So now you've heard about why he is successful. He came from poverty, worked his whole life and did incredibly well for himself. An actual great story to hear. We can think the price of the food is ridiculous, but aside from that, no real reason to hate the guy at all. No one's forced to eat there. They did it for the sickness that is the social media clout. I can't be mad that he was smart enough to capitalise on the fame and turn this into a restaurant empire. So when did things start going wrong for Salt Bay? 
and the public's opinion of him. Well, to be as flamboyant and out there as he already was by this stage requires a certain personality type. This personality type, whatever we want to call it, is one that feeds on attention. With the money, the posing, with the celebrities every night, the fame, it can turn some people into a complete monster. In Turkey, you would ask a kid, what would you like to be? He or she would say, a doctor, an engineer, astronaut. Now everybody wants to be a butcher because of me. Now if you ask a kid, they want to be Salt Bay. They see me as an idol. I'm an inspiration to a lot of people in a very short period of time. Now this is not a joke, obviously I can't really stop myself from laughing here, but this was an interview from Salt Bay published in late 2021 with The Times. The statement, when read by most people, does of course betray the narcissism of Salt Bay. It's not enough to be wildly successful as he is, but needing to make out that he is a literal idol to children because he sprinkles salt on steak. And far be it from me to say that he's entirely wrong and no kids have said they want to be Salt Bay because he's rich and famous, which kids definitely want to be. But I can say, kids do not by and large want to be a butcher, since butchers have and still do exist across the globe and receive no fame or fortune for their work. If we approach this statement with the most charitable lens possible, what he's confusing is kids want to have over 50 million followers on Instagram, hang out with their favourite social media stars, you know, football players and actors, while having 60 million dollars in a dozen restaurants. Which doesn't make Salt Bay an idol, it makes him any other rich and famous person on the planet who kids want to be, the occupation is completely irrelevant at that stage. The reaction to this quote on social media tells the story of what, you know, normal people thought about this, with someone calling him the Kanye West of putting salt on things but without the charisma, which hasn't aged extremely well to be honest. Now some of the more behind the scenes reasons as to why people don't like Salt Bay is he's accused of poor treatment of workers despite making a considerable sum of money. This comes in the form of employees claiming he was taking a cut of their tips and when they brought it up, he fired them. He settled this out of court for $230,000, then the other lawsuit against him for more tip related shenanigans. There's also the constant discussion about the insane prices, just the excess of it all, including one bill that came from London that went public at £37,000 for a meal. Then there's the disregarding of health safety rules which got one of his restaurants closed in Boston, but all of that is nothing compared to what comes next. If going viral created Salt Bay, it would only be poetic that going viral also destroyed Salt Bay. Just think about it. Yeah. Well, you think if he plays in MLS for the next three years, there's a World Cup in the States. Right there. They come asking. This is one of, if not the most awkward videos I've ever seen. Salt Bay fully displays his main character syndrome at the World Cup Finals when Argentina lifted the trophy in the back and forth nail-biting match against France. Within minutes of what is the most emotional high of their life, one of the most prestigious and coveted achievements in the world of sports, a completely unrelated and not even Argentinian man who is famous because of pouring salt from his salty elbow was standing next to the players, grabbing the World Cup trophy from them players who just won, doing his viral salt motions on it, lifting it in the air, kissing it, just about everything he shouldn't have been doing and had absolutely no right to do. The internet was yet again on fire with talk of hashtag Salt Bay. This time though, it wasn't 2017's bewilderment and intrigue. It was derision, cringe and anger. Whenever you thought this was over, another clip or image surfaced of this man doing something else to the world champions, though the biggest being Messi's look of utter confusion when he was being repeatedly grabbed from behind by a butcher from Turkey. In the aftermath of being laughed at for this specific interaction, not content with being humbled a little bit and reflecting on what it is people were unhappy about regarding his behaviour, Salt Bay did what any other narcissist would do. He posted a video on his Instagram of himself and Lionel Messi meeting, shaking hands, exchanging a few words and taking a picture at one of his restaurants. Salt Bay's post also tagged Messi but all three hashtags were about Salt Bay, Salt and of course not forgetting hashtag Salt Life. This is clear to all as a pathetic grasp at saving face, that Messi does in fact like him and they are friends of some kind, as opposed to what we all know, which is if you're famous and you go to a place with other famous people, you might exchange a few words and take a picture, especially if you're eating at this person's restaurant. That however, doesn't give you the right to grab them repeatedly in the best moment of their life 
on a pitch you shouldn't be on. Following this, Salt Bay has been banned from the US Open and FIFA are opening an investigation into his antics at the World Cup. They want to know why and how this man was so close to the players in the aftermath and why was he touching the cup, which is strictly against the rules. The only people who are allowed to touch it are the winners and a few officials, as this is one of the most, if not the most prestigious achievements in sports. Music events are also following suit on the band, just saying Salt Bay can't come here, of course to get their own taste of the clout that comes from doing so when a topic's going viral, a bit of self-awareness here, but it's hard to be mad at them because of how thoroughly unlikable this man seems to be from these recent events. In terms of his restaurants, what started out as being good food for a reasonable price turned into excess for the sake of it, existing solely for people who want to flex that they ate at an internet memes restaurant with a piece of meat that is no better than something one tenth of its cost, essentially making it a supreme t-shirt but on a plate. Since then, as he gets more and more popular, he opens more and more restaurants, the reviews show a clear trend. The more recent you go, the more people talk about overpriced, poor service, long wait times and ridiculously over the top items on every menu that exist only to serve as pictures on Instagram. Despite the criticisms of the food and the pricing and Salt Bay himself, he continues to open new locations constantly, with the most recent being the Salt Bay Burger in New York, which has awful, awful reviews and serves up exactly what you would expect. Overpriced mediocrity that exists entirely to say, I ate at Salt Bay's restaurant. While Salt Bay undoubtedly worked hard for what he had before the fame, and likely works hard now after it, the man has an out of control ego, and it shows that viral social media clout can literally take you anywhere as long as you try hard enough. From a salty elbow on a sweaty man to holding the World Cup above his head, for absolutely no reason. That's why everybody hates Salt Bay, although I'm sure some people will still continue to dine out at his clout restaurants, paying $17 for an abomination of a milkshake and $120 for a golden cheeseburger. 